Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's series will be the dwarf planet that we're going to learn about. It is the biggest object in the asteroid belt. The dwarf planet series was named after the Roman goddess of corn and harvests. The word cereal comes from the same name. In 1772, John Ellert Board, an astronomer, suggested that there is a missing planet between Jupiter and Mars. The reason why he suggested that was because based on the Titus Bod law, there was a regular pattern in the size of the orbits of the known planets in that time. But when it came to the size of the orbits of Jupiter and Mars, according to the law, there should be another planet that is between these two planets. According to the mathematical calculations, the missing planet was predicted to be 2.8 astronomical units away from the Sun. Later in the 1800s, a group headed by Franz Xavier von Zach sent requests to 24 experienced astronomers, asking to gather all their efforts to search for this missing planet. Even though they did not discover Ceres, they found several large asteroids. One of the astronomers selected for the search was Giuseppe Piazzi, a Catholic priest at the Academy of Palermo, Sicily. He had already found Ceres on the 1st of January, 1801, even before receiving the invitation. He was actually searching for a star in the catalogue of the zodiacal stars of Mr. Lakela, but found something else. He was observing a moving star-like object which he thought was a comet at first. After observing Ceres 24 times, on the 11th of February 1801, an illness interrupted. Before that, on the 24th of January 1801, he wrote in letters to only two fellow astronomers, Barnum Orani of Milan and John Alert Board of Berlin. In April, Piazzi sent his observations that he has made to Orani, Bort and Jerome Lalande, another one of his fellow astronomers. On September 1801, the observations was published in the issue of the Monatlicia Correspondencia. By this time, the position of Ceres would have changed, mostly due to the Earth's orbital motion. Due to this, they couldn't confirm Giuseppe's Piazzi's discovery. It was now the end of the year and Ceres should have been visible again. But after this much time, it was hard for, the, for them to predict its exact position. Carl Friedrich Gauss developed a method of orbit determination to recover Ceres. In a few weeks time, he predicted the path of Ceres and sent his results to von Zock. On the 31st December 1801, Ceres was found near the predicted position and was recovered by von Zock and Heinrich W. M. Albers. Called an asteroid for many years, Ceres is so much bigger and so different from its rocky neighbours that scientists classified it as a dwarf planet in 2006. Even though Ceres contains about 25% of the asteroid belt's total mass, tiny Pluto is still 14 times more massive. When the Dawn spacecraft arrived in March 2015, Ceres became the first dwarf planet to receive a visit from a spacecraft. Scientists describe Ceres as an embryonic planet which means it started to form but didn't quite finish. Its close neighbour, Jupiter, could have prevented it from becoming a fully formed planet. About 4 billion years ago, Ceres settled into its current location among the leftover pieces of the planetary formation in the asteroid belt. 
between Mars and Jupiter. Ceres is a dwarf planet. It has a radius of about approximately 476 kilometers. From 2.8 astronomical units away from the Sun, it takes about 22 minutes for the sunlight to travel from the Sun to Ceres. Taking about 1,682 Earth days to travel around the Sun. But a day on Ceres is only 9 hours. With its axis just tilted 4 degrees, it almost spins upright. And unlike more tilted planets, it doesn't experience seasons. Ceres is similar to the terrestrial planets. One of the similarities is that it has layered interior. But the layered interior aren't clearly defined. The dwarf planet probably could have a solid core and a mantle made of water ice. Ceres could be composed of as much as 25% of water. If this is true, Ceres could have more water than Earth does. Its crust is rocky and dusty and has a large amount of salt deposits. And the salt found on Ceres isn't like the salt we know. Instead, it is combined of different materials like magnesium sulphide. Covered in countless young and small craters, but none of these craters are larger than 280 kilometers in diameter, which then meant that during its lifetime it has been hit by asteroids. The lack of craters could be due to the layers of ice that lie below the surface. The surface features on Ceres could smooth out over time if ice or another lower density material such as salt is just below the surface. It is possible that past hydrothermal activity such as ice volcanoes erase some large craters. In some of Ceres craters there are regions that stay in permanent shadow without any sunlight. They could have water ice in them for long periods of time. In the thin atmosphere of this dwarf planet, there is evidence that it contains water vapor. The water vapor could be produced by ice volcanoes or by ice near the surface sublimating. In other words, that, tr that are transforming from solid to gas. We still don't know if Ceres has a magnetosphere, but till the answer arrives, we are just going to have to wait. Ceres could be one of those few places in our solar system where we could search possible signs of life. Since Ceres has a lot of water and on Earth water is essential for life, so it's possible that with this ingredient and a few other conditions met, life could maybe exist there. Even if there is life on Ceres, they would likely be very small microbes, similar to bacteria. And if there is no living thing today, there could be signs it harbored life in the past. The Dawn spacecraft was launched by NASA on the 27th September 2007, was sent on a mission to study two of the three protoplanets. One of the protoplanets that the Dawn studied and observed was Ceres. These are some of the things that the spacecraft observed during its encounter with Ceres. A crater named Okatar is found on Ceres. In the center of this crater, there is a small dome that is about 3 kilometers across and about 340 meters high. Okatar is named after the Roman god of the harrow and the helper to Ceres. Another one of Ceres crater is Ikapati. This crater has a complex of central peaks and roughly parallel fractures on its floor, which measures about 50 kilometers in diameter. Ikapati is named after the Philippine goddess of cultivated lands.
the largest mountain found on Ceres is estimated to have an average height of about 4 kilometers and a maximum height of about 5 kilometers on its steepest side. It is about 20 kilometers wide at the base. It is named after the traditional post-harvest festival, Ahuna, of the Sumi Naga people of India. Uvara is the third largest crater. It has a central peak and a number of unexplained ridges that intersect. It is named after the ancient Indo-Iranian personification of fertility. Yalut is the second largest confirmed crater after Kervin. It is named after the Dahu main deity of the yam harvest, Yalud. It is a series of canyons running from it. Dante is another large crater on Ceres, rimmed by a number of minor vacuoles. It is named after Dantu, the timekeeper and first god of planting of the Ga people of Accra, Ghana. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share. Till then, signing off, Shoni.